This is my mate Marty, and for the last few years we've been making a YouTube show called Mighty Car Mods, showing people all over the world how to modify their cars. Recently, we got a call from this guy, Steve King, and his friends at JTB, who asked us if we'd like to take a road trip of Hokkaido, the second largest island of Japan. We thought it was an awesome idea, so we jumped on a plane from Sydney to Tokyo and then got a short one hour flight to Asaikawa where we'd begin our journey. Waiting for us at Asaikawa Airport were the guys we're going to be travelling with, including Mr Sato who supplied some cars and Steve our interpreter. Hey, I gotta do it. They'd organised a couple of cars to take on our trip, including a 96 version 3 STI WRX and a Suzuki Alto Works RZR all-wheel drive K car with a 660cc turbocharged engine. Look at that! Wow, they packed in, don't they? With all our gear packed, it was time to hit the road because there was a local car club waiting for us just outside the airport. As soon as we left the airport, we got a taste of just how awesome the driving roads are in Hokkaido. A local car club called the 88s got word that some Australians were on their way, so they met us to show Hello. us their rides. <laughs> Hello! 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 Hello. Very nice to meet you. Hello? Hello? That's good English. Hello? How are you? Hello? Call JDM drifts back. The 88s were very excited to show Mighty Car Mods inside their cars. Drift style gear knobs, same as I had in the 180, which is awesome. And um, and there's kind of more electronics in there than the TARDIS, really. It's incredible. That's very cool. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Love those wheels. <laughs> this is cool. The headlights need a little bit. <laughs> ah, front mount. Cool. I like it. Oh. Carbon fiber. Right. I don't know. Can't tell this is gonna be good. <laughs> yes! Oh wow, that's awesome! What else is going on? How many different cars is this? About <laughs> <laughs> five different cars. I love it. In an S14 drift spec. It's great. There's a real sense that these cars are really just used as an appliance and it's not uncommon for these guys to go through a few cars a year as they get more and more beyond repair. Ooh. 
Oh. So, um, did you do these things to the um to the car, or were they done already? Kuruma no kaizo was zembe jimen de yatta n desu ka? No, 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 no. He. <laughs> so he's the he's the tech guy for them. All right? Oh, right. Okay. Great. And um and is it fast? Hayai desu ka? Yes. <laughs> that front bumper is off a Subaru Legacy. The worlds have joined. Nissan and Subaru, Martin. Yeah, it's possible. How good is it? After having a good look through their cars, the 88s decided to take us for a drive and show us some of the awesome back roads around VA. way up to a peaceful lookout in the mountains, but the only thing we really had to look out for was bears. We gotta watch out for bears. They're dangerous. Arr. The mountain roads of Japan are just as you'd imagine them. Beautiful, peaceful, tranquil, and full of drifters. <laughs> this kind of driving is not just for the boys, the girls are also keen to give their cars a good thrashing. If anything falls off your car, it's just a matter of picking up the broken piece and using a cable tie to stick it back on so you're ready for another run. Drifting on a private road like this is really the only safe way to do it. While there was still some tread left on the tyres, the 88s decided to take us for a drive through the mountains and show us their favourite thing to do after a big day of driving. Lavender ice cream is a favourite for the drifters uh, yep. and it's a specialty of BA produced with fresh lavender that's farmed from the area. We made sure everyone had Mighty Car Mod stickers and they were put to good use straight away. We said goodbye to the 88s and hit the road again. This is the Otokayama Brewery, the most famous in Asahikawa city. Their name appears in many old block prints from the days when men had bald heads and swords. Kind of like me, but I don't have a sword. Otokayama sake is made from rice and from the pure underground water that runs from the Taisetsuzan mountain range. They only make it in winter to keep the flavour consistent and it's won them international awards for 30 years straight. The brewery gets thousands of visitors per year and they export all over the world, so it was time for us to check it out. We're 
We're at the Otokoyama Sake Brewery and they've been making sake for over 340 years. Now the important thing to remember is that Japan has a zero tolerance for alcohol, so the keys to the subi, they're going to someone else because Marty and I are about to get stuck into it. Tsunodaru, and they were traditionally used um, usually by the, the ladies just before they get married. Um, so they would fill this up with sake and then take it to the to the guy's family um, and kind of ask for the marriage, you know? Right, engagement party. Exactly, yeah. With sake. They normally put a few thousand kilometres between their sake and the Australians, but today we're going to try some in the actual brewery. Oh. The quintessential sake experience. 340 year old recipe, possibly. That's smooth. Wow, that is probably the smoothest alcohol I've ever tasted. That's, I'll have some more, thanks. That one's Japanese for hey, yak. So he said this is quite a, quite a nice pure one. Mm. Smells whiny. They don't normally give out samples this big, but they know we're from Australia and it's in our culture, so bottoms up. Oh, this is even better. They get better as you go. Mm. Oh, suck. Saki bucket. Oh, no, 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 I think they took my behaviour as a compliment to their amazing brew because they asked us for our autographs on the way out and gave us some t-shirts. We left the brewery and Mr Sato kindly drove us through the city of Asahikawa to our hotel. A few hours later, we headed back into town and Mr Sato took us to his favourite restaurant called Kiswite in downtown Asahikawa for some authentic Japanese cuisine. Hokkaido is famous both for seafood and farm produce, so you can eat some of the best Japanese food and it's cheaper than in the big cities. Bonsai. Oh wow. We also brought some cuisine of our own and an Australian icon that was probably made in Japan. Thank you. spicy. This here is taco sanwina. This is traditional Japanese fish sausage. Sounds wrong. Why are they laughing at me? Did you say it wrong or are they... It tastes good. It tastes really good though. It's very spicy. It's a delicious fish sausage. I highly recommend you try it. This is one of my favorite cars and I'm wondering what you, you guys think of it. Scrap. 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 Scrap? <laughs> Look at this in my old car, Scrap! <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Sato, you don't have any So, in, <laughs> do I want in, to know? <laughs> uh, you might cry. <laughs> so, in, in Japan, you'd only get the amount of money that it's worth for like the actual metal. Wow. So, you're looking at about $100. Your TV show is now playing on a big, big screen through Bose speakers <laughs> and everyone's watching you and they know who you are. So there's all these people waiting for you guys. Steve's friend Yosuke has arranged for us to meet some of the locals at a 1970s style disco bar that plays Mighty Car Mods on their screens on a Tuesday night.
This is one of the coolest bars, complete with graffiti on the wall, disco balls, and a whole bunch of Japanese girls who'd come out to meet us. I had my birthday on the flight over, so they organised me a birthday celebration complete with cake and songs. We did such a good job of the dishes that they offered us a job and then asked us to sign the wall. <laughs> When you're in a Saikoa, make sure you come and say hi to this guy at Vivian. It's time for us to get some snacks for our road trip. Lemon and onion flavour. No. No? Okay. Oh, dude, bowl of squid flavour. Bowl of squid. No. Um, hot pot of cheese flavour. Maybe. No. Club. That's whale flavour. This is a bag chocked full of Japanese snacks. All of that is gonna be in us over the next few days. <laughs> the next morning, Mr. Sato, Yoshke and Mitsuri took us to Asaikawa Jinja Temple. There are various religions practiced in Japan, such as Buddhism or Shinto, and Asaikawa Jinja is one of the Shinto shrines in Japan. Japanese people traditionally visit shrines on New Year's Day to pray for good fortune for the coming year, but also at other times to pray for good luck or fortune in business, marriage, university exams and other such major life events. It's also quite common for Japanese people to take their car to the shrine to have the car blessed to ensure safe driving, free of accidents. And as we were about to take a road trip around Hokkaido, we decided to get our little Alto blessed. So we've got to park the car just there where you see the white sign. Yep. The car's not allowed on there obviously because yep. that's where the gods walk. Yep. Um, so we're going to park the car there and then walk into the temple and do the initial part of the ceremony inside the temple. And then the priest is going to come out with us to the car and he's going to do the... Uh, bless the car. He's going to bless the car for your safe driving for the rest of your Hokkaido trip. And your we were introduced to Mr. Daiki Ashihara, who is the Kanushi or head priest at the shrine, who took us through the ceremony. After the 30 minute ceremony, our little Suzuki was suitably blessed, and Yoshke had arranged for us to meet up with Hiro Ishikawa, a professional Japanese calligraphy artist. Mr. Ishikawa had agreed to teach us the basics of Japanese calligraphy, and with his deep knowledge of kanji, he'd write out our names, and then we'd try and copy it the best we could.
top of the like a chopstick almost. Exactly what he said. Yeah. Exactly. So, oh, you can't do, you can't do. You can't do. Need it, need it. Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Ishikawa has just done our names in kanji, and uh, what we've got to do now is, uh, using the very limited skills we have, we're going to try and recreate our names in kanji. So, that's, uh, that's the competition now. Mum, I'm going to be honest with you, because you're a nice guy, these are terrible. So, it, it's interesting, it has a very artistic feel. It's a nice way of saying it's crap. And our score out of 10. Judge, you ten months in on that guy? Seven. Seven! Seven. Ah, hey! Excellent! Okay. Okay. So okay, and uh, on Great. This one's very artistic, this one's very smart. Oh, that's very that's very apt actually for us. And a score out of 10 for so Mum. Ten months in on that guy? 8.5! Oh, wow! Okay, okay. What we weren't told is that whoever loses the calligraphy competition will actually be taking on the Japanese kendo master in a fight to the death. What you can see up on the wall here, this signifies that he's a sixth dan kendo master, but as I'm a guest in his country and his dojo, I'm sure he's going to be very kind. So it's actually a little bit claustrophobic in the helmet. It kind of makes you feel a little bit spacey because it's so tight. It's, um, it's pressing against your ears, so you kind of, it feels like when you're wearing earplugs and you can hear everything that's going on in your body. I can imagine that if you got hit in the head while wearing this helmet, it would be pretty loud. <laughs> Mr. Ishikawa was really nice a few minutes ago, but now he just kept screaming at me and trying to chop my head off. You alright dude? Oh. You okay? Ah! Oh. <laughs> okay! So bow again then? Oh! Okay. He's a scary dude man! He is. As a storm brewed over Asaikawa, it was time to modify our little car. The reason we chose this car for our road trip is because it's turbo, small, all-wheel drive and heaps of fun. The yellow number plate signifies that it's a key car, which has to be under 660 cc's and enjoys many benefits including cheaper rego and running costs. Mr Sato was kind enough to let us use his workshop, Car Shop Zenith, which was lucky because the skies opened up. We can't get these cars in Australia, so we're really excited to be able to work on the car in its home country. We brought with us a few Australian made turbo components to raise the boost pressure and squeeze a little more performance out of this tiny engine. We fitted a boost gauge so we could monitor the changes to the delight of our local fans. We've got a couple of fans in Japan making their own behind the scenes documentary by the looks of it. There was a 400 metre long car park out the back of the garage where we could test out our mods. With the most important mod done, we just had word that I'd been invited to get my ass kicked again, this time at the local Aikido school. Aikido is a Japanese martial art that harmonises with the motion of an attacker to redirect the force of their attack rather than opposing it head on. Aikido is one of Japan's grappling arts, and it's very effective at breaking arms. This 
school is run at Asahi Kawa's medical college, so all the practitioners are doctors. They train three times a week for three hours. The next day we set off in the WRX, Alto and Golf with Mr Sato, Steve and Mitsuri to check out the Sapporo car auctions. Marty was in the Alto, making sure all the mods we did yesterday worked as they should. And I was in the WRX, making sure its mods worked too. And Steve was in his Golf, making sure my mods were better than his. The countryside and the driving in Hokkaido really is amazing. I was quite proud of myself. My son is broke on the plane and I added this uh, eye mask thing to it, but the problem is... It, it hurts too. It's really, really bright around here, so we had to uh, sample the local fashion. <laughs> Yours are terrible, dude. What do you mean? What did you do the front of them? I melted them. Yeah, look, take them off. Marty's used a cigarette lighter to modify the front of his there. With our sunglasses and the TV on, it was time to take off at a leisurely pace up the highway to the auctions. Sapporo is around one and a half hours up the highway from Asaikawa. This is corn, onion, cheese, and mayonnaise on a donut. off the highway. Uh, we were on the highway for about uh, one and a half hours in the STI. Uh, we got Steve in the GTI and the little Alto works is behind us. Um, and um, we're about to go into the auction house and um, check out some of the mad cars for sale. USS Sapporo is a massive car auction house. Around 5,000 cars go through these auctions every single day. Mr. Sato is the elected vice chairman of the Hokkaido chapter of the Japan Association of Used Car Dealers. So he pulled a few strings to get us full access to the auction house as these are restricted areas that only professional dealers get to see. Japan has an incredibly strict quality control system for cars at auction. The inspectors fill out detailed forms which are then scanned so the dealers in the bidding room can get information on each car that's for sale. Such a huge variety of cars for sale in Japan, we've imported six ourselves over the years for our car show. We even found a Daihatsu that's exactly the same model as our show car. That is awesome. That is so awesome. Okay, so everybody wants a cheap car. They want something fast for not much bucks. This RX-7 here, $300. No, not $3,000, $300 for this RX-7. Unbelievable. I was getting excited about $300 sports cars while Marty was getting excited about this thing, which was only 250 bucks. There was a heap of key cars for sale, and it made us realise just how small our little car was. There is such a huge range of cars for sale, almost anything you can imagine, and a lot of them can be purchased and imported back to Australia for around half the price you'd pay locally.
seems we're not the only people with an Alto Works. We've found another one here at the auctions. It looks somewhat cleaner than ours though. It's newer, it's got airbags, it's, uh, it's all polished up, and it's got a boost gauge and a rev meter just for the passenger. It was time to say goodbye to Mitsuri and Mr. Sato and continue on our trip. But not before attempting to release a few more kilowatts from our Alto with a brand new air filter. Oh, filthy. Wow. With a little bit more power unleashed, it was time to get back on the road. Dude, you are such a bogan, dude. You are from the Sutherland Shire. You are Frodo the bogan. We're back on the highway, heading towards Lake Toya, which means a couple of hours on some of the best roads we've seen so far. country roads and soon after that into a dirt road that led up a mountain so we could get a view over the top of Lake Toya. Lake Toya is 10 kilometres in diameter and is the result of a volcanic eruption thousands of years ago. This is Mount Utsu, and we've organised to get a cable car to the crater at the top. to us that this mountain has been slowly moving over the last 35 years and it used to be to our left and now it's to our right. We're here at Mount Utsu and this is my first volcanic experience. This is actually a live volcano behind us and it last erupted in 1977. What you can see down there used to be a lake but when the volcano erupted, it actually blew the lake away and now there's nothing left but this huge crater. And apparently it goes off once every 30 or so years. Enjoy the really nice hotel, nice food and the nice outdoor, outdoor bath. Thank you. Have a relaxing time. Okay. Thank you. It was time to jump back into our super economical K-car our boost controller had made it faster, but also made it more thirsty for fuel, as we later found out.
A service station in Japan lives up to its name. Not only do you not have to hold the fuel nozzle lever, your car is emptied of rubbish, your fluids and tyres checked and your windows cleaned all while being refuelled. We kind of felt bad just standing around and watching. You relax, it's all good. Perfect Japanese accuracy. That evening we stayed at the Sun Palace Hotel, which has rooms right on the banks of Lake Toya. Every night during summer they put on a fireworks display for the guests. The hotel has its own indoor water park along with traditional Japanese onsen, which are hot baths that use water directly from the volcanic spring. <laughs> The next day, we decided to take a jet boat out onto the lake. Okay, so we're about to jump on board the F-14 Phantom Marine jet boat. So in the middle of Lake Toya, it's actually so shallow that the water's only about waist deep and we're right in the middle of the lake. What we're actually sitting in now is a volcanic crater and while it's only a metre deep here, if you go a couple of metres that way, it drops off 170 metres straight down. We're headed to Oshima, a picturesque island in the middle of the lake which has a huge population of deer. So these are the biscuits you feed the deer with, and if there's any left over afterwards, you can eat them yourself. One for you, and one for me. So 50 years ago, they bought three deers here. They all uh, got together, and now there's 250 of them. Salt and a fried bean curd snack eat. So in all the case of very nice English here, what this actually means is they don't want you to feed the deer with salty or deep fried sweets. Would somebody feed the deer deep fried food? They might do, you never know, some people. We swapped a business card for an ice cream, which was a pretty good deal. And then we were back on the boat, this time with me driving and everyone else terrified. I'm driving a 200 horsepower jet boat right now. 3.6 litre turbo diesel Volvo. So over the last few years there's been a lot of rivalry between Marty and me and the whole Nissan and Subaru thing. But we have finally found a way to settle it once and for all. So Marty jumped into his Subaru Swan with launch assist yep. and headed out onto the racetrack. And I jumped into my Nissan Swan and took to the water. Subaru wins on the road and in the water in a swan. It's just not, it's just not what the party should have. Yeah, right. What's going on, dude? What's the um, Steve's car seems to be losing some power. It's making some weird noises. We're going to throw in a GFB aftermarket blower valve. It's going to hold the boost and it's going to make his car faster for free. With Steve's car running right again, it was time to de-sticker his ride and add some of our own vinyl so he'd actually gain some more power, Mighty Car Mod style. Okay, so it's a modified hatchback and we're from Australia, so you know we've got to do this. With our P-plate representing, it was time to hit the road again this time heading through the mountain roads to Sapporo. But we wanted to do it in a clean car. We're getting a car wash, Mighty Car Mod style. 
Not really. Someone else is doing it. With the little car clean, we took the Alto Works for a spirited drive through the mountain pass. The roads of Hokkaido feel like they were made for turbo cars, with tight corners, smooth surfaces and fast straights. Along the way, we stopped at the famous Nakayama Toge. <coughs> Inside a donut. You'd think the Americans would have thought of that already. With my stomach full of donut and potato, I met an eligible young lady who was a big fan of my headband. Is, is, is this cool? Is this cool? With numbers exchanged, it was time to hit the road again. We stopped off at this beautiful lookout where we could enjoy some peace and quiet. I'm so glad we just washed the car. A couple more hours on the road and we start getting into the outskirts of Sapporo City. We've just stopped in at Area 4x4 which is a used car dealership in Hokkaido and I thought I'd show you just how cheap some of these amazing cars are. So behind me here, this is a Puda R33 Skyline. That's around about three and a half thousand Australian dollars. Now next to it, one of my favourites, SR20 180SX, also about three and a half thousand dollars. Now there's a fully pumped S15 Silvia here, that's probably around about ten thousand dollars, but that is a completely worked car, that one is out of control. Now over here, this one's pretty cool. We've got the other uh, massive arches on the MR2, which is pretty crazy. That's about five thousand dollars. Very serious S15 here. Apparently, this one here, he said, will beat a Porsche. Any Porsche, he said. That's ten thousand um, dollars. GTO, one of Japan's kind of, well, not as popular supercars, but definitely a very fast car. That's around about $5,000. Comes with this incredibly ugly kit as well, but it is very Jap. And it's amazing just how cheap these cars are, considering by the time we get to Australia, they're considered a specialty and probably cost four to five times that much. So this fully specced out legacy is 25.5. Now in Japan, this tiny little Suzuki key car with less features, less everything, is another 2,000 on top of that. <laughs> and the reason is, less tax, less rego, less petrol. They're expensive to run, so they want these, there's more demand. So he was just telling me about um, why the Subaru Legacies and, and other cars like that are dropping so much in price. Uh, one reason is the, uh, basically the price they cost to run the cars. It obviously costs a lot more to run a car like that than it does to run the small K car over there. So that's one of the main ones. And the other one is, um, the, well, they're saying in Japan, the Echo car thing. Um, and that's basically, uh, you know, like the, the hybrid cars and the electric cars and stuff. Those are really popular right now. We made our way to the hotel just as the sun was going down over the city. 
Sapporo is the fifth largest city in Japan that around 2 million people call home. As well as being a hugely popular centre in the winter for the ski season, it boasts the Sapporo Brewery, its own mountains, rivers, parks and is a thriving arts hub. In winter there are snow sculptures right through the centre of the city and in summer they have beer festivals where all the major beer manufacturers in Japan display their stuff. We headed out for dinner with some of the people that helped make our trip possible. Marty learnt the Japanese art of pouring beer for everyone and I ate a huge amount of Hokkaido crab, which is a local delicacy. As long as you haven't had more After the amazing dinner, I happened to mention that blow-off valves are illegal in Australia and they laughed about it for the next two hours. It was a great way to end our last night in Hokkaido. Here's a good travel tip. When you leave your car overnight, turn the light off. We got our asses kicked by a little Daihatsu on our way to Super Auto Vax, which is a huge car parts and accessories chain store that is literally the size of Bunnings. Even the car park was awesome. We're on our way to Up Garage, which is a second-hand parts store. They've got every car performance part you can imagine, and they only sell second-hand. Amazingly, everything is around 25% of what you pay in Australia. Legacy wheels. Oh, dude, 70 bucks for a whole set. So if you want a spoiler, they start at 10 bucks. You want bass, you want sub, we got it. 24 inch. Oh, that's really, really heavy. Okay, so we've been looking for some uh, rims for our little show car, and we've just found some Rays versus Turismo. These are 20% off, around about 139 US dollars. So it's gonna be less than 150 Australian dollars for a whole set of four. As a quick demonstration of just how small our little car is, we decided to drive around the city on the footpath until someone asked us to stop. So we took a break and got a hot lunch, which you can get at any 7-Eleven or convenience store in Japan. Now the Japanese are very good at making things small and they've managed to get 50 lemons inside this tiny bottle. I don't know how they did it, but they've also managed to get Marty and I in a tiny car for the last week and uh, I'm about to drink 50 lemons. Here we go. That was 25 lemons. That is 25 lemons. <laughs> Excuse me. We're heading towards Chitoza City and trying to see how far we can get without our hands on the steering wheel. Just kidding. We're actually trying to line Steve up to beat his golf. Alto works, dude. That was a good launch. We're catching, we're catching. That was a good launch, man. Thanks, mate. You had him in the first five metres. We're heading to Hokkaido <laughs> Off-Road Park, which is Japan's best, with over seven kilometres of dirt track. This is the place that Japanese motorbike manufacturers bring their new models for research before they manufacture and export them all over the world. They've got a whole fleet of dune buggies that you can race, 
but we came up with another idea. So after all this rivalry, it's finally time for the ultimate Japan battle. I am in a dune buggy and Marty is in the Suzuki Alto Works all-wheel drive turbo on a rally track. And I'm gonna destroy you! I'm gonna destroy you, dude. I'm gonna pump you hard. Eek. 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 The dune buggy was way faster in the corners, but as soon as we're on a straight, the turbo all-wheel drive power of the Suzuki couldn't be beat. P-plate and all. Dude. Hokkaido Off-Road Park is also home to Japan's best motocross track. Dude, I'm having the best time. This is just awesome. I'm very, um, I'm very glad that I didn't break my wrist out there because I had, um, oh, I was having these nightmares as I was going around of uh, being on the plane with that kind of bit of my forearm sticking out at a, a 90 degree angle. Uh, but definitely next time I come back here, and it will be soon, uh, we are going to, um, we're going to bring all our gear and we're going to go nuts out there. Because Steve drives a Golf, he's never done a burnout or got sideways or driven on gravel. So I decided to take him on one final drive in the little alto. Check out the look on Steve's face. Yeah! <laughs> gonna vom. <laughs> I think he's gonna vom. I'm gonna vom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <I had> a hug. <laughs> we had the best time in Hokkaido with this guy, with our Alto, going crazy on the track. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We made our final trip to the airport and realised it doesn't really matter what kind of car you've got because ultimately it's all about the people you meet along the road.